All right, statistics, the science of conducting studies, collecting, organizing, summarizing, analyzing, and drawing conclusions. So this is important. The definition of this is usually on the homework or tests. Uh, so it's collect. So the, the key words, collect, organize, summarize, analyze, and then draw a conclusion uh, from the data, the, the input, the, the information that you got in. The data is the information that you got in. So th those, that's, I'd, I'd highlight that. Why study statistics? Um, because every company uses statistics. That's one reason why. All right, moving on, scrolling down. So variable is the same, has the same definition as it is in math. Uh, something that has different values, something that can change. You know, we, we, we call X's in math. 2X plus three equals uh, something. If X is one, two times one plus three is five. If X is two, so the, the value can change. A variable is just a changing values. It assumes different values. Uh, something that has the ability to change values. Okay. Um, still scrolling down, scrolling down, do, 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 if it lets me. And all this, these value, these uh, variables that come in, all these variables that come in is, is our data. So anytime we're inputting or asking your opinion, yes or no, or, or what number do you give me, one through 10, that's all data. That's just variables that could change. It's all the data that's coming in. So data is just all the things that we want uh, that we want to analyze and we want to look at information coming in, data. And a collection of our data is called datum. Uh, we don't, I think that might be in your homework, but it's not on any tests. So datum is just a collection of the data. Yeah, so uh, uh, it's just a, each value in a data set. It's a, a group of information called the datum. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, once again, people's heights, this is data. Once again, data, married, are you single or married? That's just data, all this is data. And, and it, it's, it's, it, these are variables. You could be single, you could be married, you could be divorced, you could be widowed. Uh, I mean, there's lots of different categories you, you could have in there and that it could change from, from one person to the next. Nothing exciting about that. Like I said, this first few, these, this whole chapter one is nothing but definitions really. Um, so we do wanna know the difference between a population and a sample. We definitely want to know the difference between a population and a sample. A population, I want to see if I see the word. I don't see it. A population is everything we are talking about. That means if I'm talking about St. Philip's students, then the population is the St. Philip students, not SAC, not Alamo colleges. If I'm, if, if I'm just talking about St. Philip students, then I'm saying that is my population. If I'm talking about uh, Republicans, <laughs> and then I say, I want to know if Republicans think Trump is good or bad then my population is just Republicans because I'm only talking about the Republicans. If I want to know the American people, is Trump good or bad, then I'm going to talk to everybody, Democrats, Republicans, independents, and then anything else that's out there, any other parties that are out there. So 
our population is whatever we're trying to focus on. Our population is what we're focusing on. A sample is part of the population we're looking at. So it's part of the population. So if I say Alamo College students is my population, if I say my population is Alamo students, then a sample can be students, SPC students. It's part of Alamo students. Uh, another sample could be North uh, West Vista students. So a population is something that we're looking at. And let's say I'm looking at all Alamo College students. Then if I want to look at a smaller part of that, I call it a sample. St. Philip students, uh, Northwest Vista students, Palo Alto students, uh, East Lakeview uh, students. So a sample is part of the population. And we, and another way of saying part of the population is a subset of the par population. Subset just means part, a smaller part of the population. So it's important to know the difference between population and sample. Population is everything that we're talking about. A sample is part, just part of everything that we're talking about. It just depends on what we're talking about. I could be talking about uh, people who are six foot tall and larger. That's a population. Everybody who's over six foot tall. Then if I want a sample of that, I could say, oh, people who are six foot five. That's just part of everybody who's taller than six foot. Let me look at all the people who are six foot five inches tall. That's a sample of the, the larger population that I'm looking at. Okay. Descriptive statistics. So you want to put a little note here. Collection, organizing, summarizing, and presentation uh, uh, of data. Uh, I think that's in the homework. Descriptive stats collecting, organizing, summarizing, and then presenting the data that you have. Uh, if we got all this data, then you wanna collect it, organize it, uh, summarize it, and present it. Uh, we, you could present it in a graph like we have down here below. We can present it in a graph. This is all the data we collected. And I have a nice little graph and table that explains the data that I collected. So this is called descriptive statistics. Describing, descriptive, describing uh, everything that you did with all this data. Mm -hmm. I'm having a hard time scrolling this thing down. But, oh, maybe it's easier if I use this. Over, oh, that goes too fast. So no, that's not easier. And here's um, another way of descriptive statistics is just show you how to present your information and to, so it has meaning. And, it, and this is trends to first time enrollment. If we collect all this data, we can see the trends to first time enrollments. So here, more people, if you look since 2010, more people are first time enrollments in a college. The trend is going up. Um, this blue with the dots is first time in college. Uh, uh, the triangles are other, uh, and these are transfers. You see, our transfers is it stays about the same. Um, and then this first time in college uh, looks like it's going down. This is continuing people who are staying in at St. Philip's and continuing. 
So uh, continuing college, uh, so that, that looks like it's going up. So you can look at the data and maybe it, it means something to you when, you when you present it in some way. That's the goal, to be able to present your data in some form that makes sense. And there's other ways of presenting the data. And we're going to look at and create all of these, by the way. Uh, you'll have to be able to create these pie charts and these uh, graphs and all that uh, on, on, uh, in the homework. So you will, not for the first week, but I think in week three, you do have to do this homework. All right, so I'm moving on. Inferential statistics. Is pretty much uh, as a guessing. <laughs> uh, inferential statistics, generalizing of samples of population, estimating, hypothesis testing. Hypothesis is an educated guess of what it does. And that's what, uh, I mean, inferential statistics is what's happening with this COVID-19 that we have out there. People are guessing, oh, our trends are going down. We're probably going to, uh, if we look at it, our death rate is going to start going down also. If the trends are going down, then we can start opening up schools. So it's, it's, using samples of the population and the population is the entire world if you look at this so a sample of the population could be usa it could be europe it could be you know uh, mexico uh, we could look at little samples and saying oh or even we could call the population in the united states of america and then a sample would be texas are the trends going up in Texas or are they going down? It looks like right now the trends in Texas are going down. In San Antonio, if you watch the news, they show you how many COVID cases we have every day. And we're at about 100, maybe a little less than 100 a day. So our trends are going down. Infer inferential uh, statistics uh, asked you what's happening. Take a good guess on what's happening or what's going to happen in the future. If our trends are going down, we're going to say, I think uh, a good educated guess would be that we're going to go down to zero at some point if we stay with the masks and keep away from everybody. Uh, and once again, generalizing a sample of po population, determining the probability of characteristics. What's the probability of you getting COVID-19? Well, the scientists can tell you because they collected all this data. They've already told us, I mean, if you think about it, uh, 50,000 people in San Antonio. <laughs> so let's do that really quick. I mean, this is not math, but 50,000 people in San Antonio have got the COVID uh, virus already um, out of 2 million. <laughs> so if you put that in your calculator, 50,000 divided by 2 million, that means you have about a 2.5% chance, maybe a 3% chance of getting the virus. So, I mean, you could say right now, determine the probability of you catching the virus in San Antonio. It's about 3%. So only 3% of our population in San Antonio has the virus right now. So, oh, uh, if I go out to HEB, I'm gonna get the virus. Well, it says here about 3% of the people ha have gotten it already. So, the question is, try to stay away from what they did. Did they go to bars? Did they party? <laughs> uh, so going grocery shopping, you could get it, but try to be safe. So only 3% of San Antonio people have gotten the virus right now. That doesn't sound like a lot, uh, but if you're one of the dead people, it means a lot. No, it will search for the printer which is available. Say that again. You can see uh, showing up I'm sorry, I'm just having a hard time hearing you. I didn't have both my headsets in. Can you say it again? All right.
Okay. So, so, oh, so descriptive, descriptive, uh, let's go back up. Descriptive statistics and inferential statistics. Uh, descriptive statistics is a fact. You have the data and it's a fact. Inferential statistics is guessing what will happen. Uh, it's like a trend. Uh, so we're, it's a it's a guess. Inferential is a guess. Descriptive is a fact. Okay. So uh, here we have questions. These are questions that will be on the test and in the homework. So let's look at these really quick. The average jackpot for the top five uh, lottery winners was uh, three hundred sixty-seven point six million. Is this a fact or is it a guess? Is it descriptive or is it inferential? Type it into the chat box if you if you would. I want to see what you guys say. Is it descriptive or is it inferential? So it looks like everybody's saying descriptive or a fact. Yes, it is. How do we know the top five is that average? Because somewhere when you win the lottery, they tell you what the lottery winner won. So they took the five lottery amounts, they added them all up, and then they divided by five, they divided it by five, and they got this answer. So yes, this is descriptive. Because that's a fact. It, they didn't guess on it. Well, how could you guess 36, 367 million point six million? You had to have the data in front of you. A study done by the American Neurology suggests that older people, uh, older people have higher uh, calorie diets, uh, more than double the. Oh, older people who have high calorie diets double their risk of memory loss, okay? Double their risk of memory loss. Um, is that a descriptive or inferential? And it looks like everybody's typing inferential. It is because there's no data. You know, for the lottery, we had data. We know what the top five lottery people won. And then we found the average. Here, all them, you know, it says a study done by American Neurology suggests older people who have a higher calorie diet uh, more than double the risk of memory loss. Where's your data? You know, descriptive tells us data. There's no data to back this up. So they're guessing. They said, we have some kind of data and we're gonna guess that they double their memory loss. There's no exact value. So we're gonna call this inferential. It's a good guess. It's a guess uh, based on the survey of this many people. Based on the survey of 9,000 people, it says people spent in 2011 spent $116. Do you see? They asked this many people, how much money did you spend uh, on Valentine's Day? And they added it all up and divided by 9317, and they got 116. So there's data there. Yes, there's data there. It's a fact. If they have the data for, you know, it's a fact. <laughs> they have the data. So we call that descriptive. If the people are just not guessing, if they say, oh, we think that the average person spent about $200 on Valentine's Day, that's then inferential. But if we say we asked, we surveyed, surveyed means we asked 9,317 people how much you spent on Valentine's Day and the average was 116, that's a fact. They have all that data in front of them. There's a couple more. 
Uh, based on the current economy, 49% of the 18 to 34 year olds have taken, have taken, I don't know, this is in the way, have taken a job to pay <laughs> bills. Oh, they give us the answer. <laughs> inferential. The reason why it's inferential, there's no data to back it up. Based on current economy, there was no data to back it up. See the chat box every time I look at it. Yeah, kind of like an if then statement. Not necessarily an if then statement. I hate to use that, but it's kind of like that. Inferential is, is there's no data to back up your answer. There's no data. Do you see it says based on the current economy, 49% of the 18 to 34 year olds. Did they do a did they do a, a survey and ask every 18 to 34 year old? No, they didn't. <laughs> they, you can't ask every eight. If they said they did a survey and they asked 5,000 people 18 to 34 and 49% uh, pay their, took a job to pay their bills, then that would be descriptive. But they just said they asked, there's no way they can ask all. They don't have all that data. So it's, it's a good guess that was what they're doing. In 2011, there were 34 deaths from the avian flu. Do you see? That's descriptive because somewhere, somewhere in the CDC, they know how many people died from this particular flu. You know, somewhere they know how many people die from that flu. They have data on that. We can know exactly how many people died from COVID-19. Well, we have data on it. Well, we might not know exactly how many, but we do have data on that. So that's descriptive. When you have the data to back up your answer, then it's descriptive. If you don't have the information to back it up, if you're guessing, then it's inferential. This is inferential. It says 79% of U.S. adults use the internet. Did they ask everybody, every U.S. adult, whether they, they, they can't ask everybody. If they said, we ask 7,000 and 79% of them said they uh, use the internet, then they could use that as de descriptive. But since we don't have any facts, it just says 79% use the internet. Did they ask everybody? <laughs> so this is just a good guess. Inferential is just a good guess. Uh oh, descriptive is more reliable. Definitely, because you you have the data to back it up. You have the information to back it up. Now, it also depends on where you get the data. You can ask a hundred Republicans, uh, do you think Trump will win the election? <laughs> and probably most of them will say yes. Or you can, and then they say, okay, 99% of the people we asked said Trump is going to win the election. Well, that's just, <laughs> that's bad data. Even though they have the data to back it up, <laughs> that is descriptive. Uh, I don't know if that's reliable. It might be more reliable if you ask, you know, 100 Republicans and 100 Democrats, uh, do you de or then 100 independents, and to, to get the correct answer. So it, I don't know about more reliable. One of these is more reliable than the other, but one of them, descriptive, has the data to back it up, has the, the facts and the data to back it up. And finally, in an online survey, 500 people. So they asked 500 people and they got an answer. That is definitely descriptive. They didn't try to ask everybody in the United States because you can't do it. But they did ask 500 people. I don't even know what they're saying. <laughs> do they consume alcohol before going to class? 31% of these 500 people said yes, they did. So that is descriptive.
because they have the facts. They asked 500 and that's realistic. You can ask 500 people, students, did you, have you ever gotten drunk or have you ever drinking alcohol before going to class? And 31% said, yes, we did. Anybody here drunk? <laughs> Hopefully not. I hope nobody other than me. No. Okay, so that is 1.1. Moving on to section 1.2. Once again, 1.2, this is just a lot of definitions. So we're just, there's not a lot of math here. It's just a lot of definitions. So let's take a look here. Uh, once again, a variable. Something that you can have different, a variable is something that can assume different values, assume different values. Uh, like in math, 2x plus 1, you can put a 1 into the x, you can put a 2 into the x, you can put a 3, you can, it, it can assume different values. A random variable, it's something determined by chance. When something random is determined by chance. So when they say we randomly did this survey, uh, it's just by chance. And there's different ways of, of, of picking random uh, variables, but it's just by chance. I can stand outside, and if you ever seen this in a mall, people stand outside in the mall with a clipboard and they'll randomly stop people. They'll say, okay, hey, sir, can you come over here? Do you like uh, Orange Julius? <laughs> And you can say yes or no and all that. You're taking a survey. Then they'll, you know, they'll stop for a while and they'll ask another person. They're randomly picking people. Hopefully, they're not picking people with Orange Julius cups in their hand. <laughs> so a lot of times in statistics, the data you get can be messed up. Uh, and that happens a lot in politics. When you hear all these politics, people... 84% of the people like Trump. Yeah, but who are you asking? Uh, so random variables is when you get the data by chance. Um, qualitative, the quality, qualitative uh, has some kind of characteristic and we're actually gonna go to uh, the difference between qualitative and quantitative here in a little bit. Qualitative has some kind of characteristics or attribute, uh, like your, the color of your eyes is a qualitative variable. It could be blue, they could be brown, they could be black, they could be bloodshot red. <laughs> qualitative variables have some kind of characteristic. Uh, a variable is something that changes so qualitative is, is a quality that you could put into uh, this variable. Uh, are you short, uh, tall, medium? Those are, those are qualitative variables. Some category that you can fit into. What color are your eyes? Blue, blonde, you know, blue, uh, green, brown. Quantitative, the next one, can be counted. How much money do you have in your wallet? You can count that, you know? So that's a variable. I have $10 in my wallet. They ask the next person, how much money do you have in your wallet? $82. It's, it, it's in a numerical amount, something that, be, not necessarily numerical, but it can be counted and measured. So quality is a characteristic, some kind of a trait, some kind of an attribute. Quantitative is an amount. A variable is an amount that you're putting in. Those are always on the tests uh, and the homework and quizzes. So yes, we're gonna have uh, questions on this stuff. Uh, so when we have quant quantitative, this is an amount, don't forget, this is a, an amount, a counted amount, quantitative. You have different categories for quantitative uh, category. Here's quantitative. Once again, qualitative is a category that uh, has some kind of attribute, and I'm going to put that here. Some kind of attribute, the color of your eyes, 
what color are your shoes? That's a qualitative. My shoes are blue, your shoes are green. Quantitative, once again, is numerical, it has a number, and there's different kinds of quantitative. You can have discrete, and these are very testable. So in quantitative, an amount, you can have discrete, which is countable. Another way of saying it is whole numbers. And, or you can have continuous, which is decimal. It can be a decimal number. By the way, one can be turned into a decimal, 1.00, right? So continuous is, is a number that has all the decimals in between, you know, you, um, your, your height, when you grow, that's a continuous data. I, uh, when I'm 12 years old, I was six foot tall. When I'm 13, I was six foot two. Well, from 12 to 13, I just didn't go from six foot to six foot two. I went from six foot to six foot point zero one, six point from zero two. Do you see? I'm growing in a decimal every day from 12 years old to 13 years old. I'm growing. I didn't just go from six foot to six foot one. At some point, I was fit six foot and a half, six foot and three quarters. You see, the, and all the decimals in between. That's what continuous is. Continuous is a number that be, can be counted as a decimal. If I measured myself, they say six foot two, but you could actually go six foot two point one three eight if you had a very precise measuring. Discrete is countable. It's always going to be a whole number, something that's countable. One, two, three, four. How many glasses uh, of milk did I drink yesterday? Three. That's countable. Uh, I'm not going to say I drank 3.2. Uh, you could, you could say you drank three and a half glasses of water, which can be continuous uh, because you drink three, then you, then you drink a little bit more, then you drink a little bit more. But if, if discrete is something you can count, continuous is something that can be turned into a decimal. And we actually have to know these really carefully because here is uh, a little quiz that we're going to take. So test the difference and see if you can t say the data is qualitative or quantitative. Remember, you can count these and this has some kind of a feature, an attribute. The color of uniforms, once again, is qualitative. Q-U-A-L, qualitative. Red, blue, green. You can't count the colors. <laughs> well, you can count the colors, but if you say count the colors uh, or, or the, what's the color of the uniform, you can't say six. <laughs> uh, quantitative is when you can count something. Pizza slices, small, medium, or large, those are qualitative. Small is a category, do you see? It, a medium is a category, large is a category. I want a large pizza or I want a large slice of pizza. Uh, those are qualitative. The gender of movie stars. You either in male, you're either male, female, now there's more. <laughs> I'm not sure, uh, LGBTQT, whatever those things are. Um, but so this is also qualitative. I mean, there, there's separate categories that are in each. When you rank teachers, um, so I'm gonna be more specific, ranking on a scale of one to five, a teacher has a rank, and if their overall rank is 3.5, that's something uh, that can be counted, that's quantitative, do you see? Um, that's an, a number that we can count. You can have a scale overall average of a three, you can have an average scale of a 3.5, now in quantitative, remember you have discrete uh, or continuous. Uh, discrete are counting and then continuous is decimals, uh, but 3.5 teachers rating, there's an actual number to it. It can be counted and their rating is 3.5. Unless the ratings are good, fair, poor, 
uh, if they're not numbers, then you can say that the rating is a teacher's rating is qualitative if it's good, bad, or ugly. Uh, you know, uh, so but if it's a number, then it's quantitative. So once again, discrete is the number of children, usually whole numbers. Discrete is, is, is usually whole numbers. The number of children, the number of books. I have five books. The number of calls that I receive, 23. Continuous usually can be changed into decimal form somehow. What is your height? Six foot two or 6.213 feet. Do you see, you can take it further. If you had a precise measuring tool, you could take it to the smallest decimal. My weight, 222 pounds. I weighed myself today. That's what I weighed. But if I had a better machine, it would say 222.3. If I had a better machine, it'd say 223, 222.345. Do you see, I don't just go from 222, and if I try to lose some weight, 220. You can't lose two pounds. You, you can't lose it. You have to go 222, 221.9, 2, you know, 0.999, 222.8, 9.99. You have to lose it in increments. You know, if you're just sitting here not eating, your body is actually losing weight. Very small decimal points, your body is losing weight because you're burning energy up. And so you're actually losing weight until you start eating again. If you never eat, you will lose weight. Uh, somebody had to teach me that. Uh, so weight, uh, height, weight, temperature. It, you can go to 74 degrees or most people think, oh, it's 74 degrees outside. But in reality, if you had an accurate machine, it might be 74.12. Do you see, you can change that into a decimal. Uh, you can change it into a decimal if you, it's more, if you have a more precise machine. And if it, it, like right now, they said, oh, it was 80 this morning. Now it's 92. It didn't jump from 80 to 92, it went from 80 to 80.1, 80.2, 80, 80 80.3. Uh, eventually it got to 81.1, do you see? It's from the early in the morning from 80, it's slowly increasing by decimal places. It doesn't go from 80 to 90 in a split second. It goes in little decimal places. That's called continuous. That's called continuous. If, if, if you know, you can, the number of children, uh, you can't, you, there, you know, it's a set number. The number of books that are on the shelf, it's a set number. Um, so those are discrete. Continuous, you can change it to a decimal if you need to. Uh, recorded heights, one, once again, they show that you can record heights in decimal form. Continuous is decimal. Discrete is usually whole numbers. So once again, wind speed of a hurricane. We've got hurricanes out there. The wind speed of a hurricane might be 134 degrees, but if in that big uh, airplane that they drive into the hurricanes to find their wind speed, it's more precise. They tell you the decimal equivalent. So this is continuous. You can, that, that wind speed is not 134. It might be 134.1, 134.2. Oh, it's increasing, it's increasing. The weight of your baggage on an airplane. So the bag is on the airplane. The bag can't lose weight. <laughs> so it's a set amount. However, when they weigh your bag at the airport, if you ever looked at it, they weigh it in kilos usually, I think, or pounds. Let's say it's 50, but they don't, it doesn't say 50, it says a decimal number. 
So if you have a precise at home, I put it on my scale or I hold it. I said, oh, my bag's 50 because it's not allowed to weigh more than 56 pounds or you have to pay extra on an airplane. So it, my bag weighs 50. But if I take it to the airport, it might say 50.1 because they have a more accurate machine. So the weight of baggage uh, can be a decimal and you can turn it into a decimal so it's continuous. The number of pages in a book that there's, it's finite. That's discrete. There might be 222 pages. There's not 222.1 unless you rip something out. The pages are finite. You know, there's 222. So that's discrete. The amount of money person spends per year for online purchases. This is a tough one. Uh, I'm saying uh, the amount of money a person spends per year for online purchases. That says per year for online purchases. Per year. So that's like an average. So I'm saying that's probably a decimal. You know, I might spend uh, $222.13. To tell you the truth, I'm not sure about this one. I would say you could say it because it changes per year. The amount of money a person spends per year, it doesn't say last year. If it was last year, then it would be finite. Uh, $223 and 13 pennies, or you could say just say a certain amount of pennies. Uh, so uh, this one's up for grabs. I'm not sure. The test will be more accurate. That one's a really confusing one. It depends on how you look at it. Are you counting the decimals, the pennies, or do you just say $222 and 13 pennies? So 13 isn't necessarily a decimal then if you say 13 pennies. So I'm gonna skip that one and not look at that. Sometimes the book gives some really bad examples that I'm not too happy with. Okay, boundary here. This is important. We have to know how to calculate the boundary. This is the only math we're going to have to do for this section. And there is, uh, for these, this section, and there is a problem on the homework for this, and there is a problem on the quiz and test usually for boundary. There's actually a problem on the final exam about boundaries. A boundary is a number in a class in which the data value would be placed before the data value is rounded. That doesn't mean much. Uh, let's just show you, for instance, uh, bound, this, this is a boundary. That means uh, this is a boundary. A number is a class in, it, the boundary of a number is a class in which the data value would be placed into. Do you see the number 72.7? The number 72.7 can, is that inside of here? 72.7, is, is that inside of that boundary? See, if this starts at, and some people are chatting, which is good. Let's see what they say. Yes. Because this is 72.5 to 73.5. 72.5, then you have 72.6, 72.7, 72.8, and it goes all the way to 73.5. That's if it fits into that boundary, you know. So this is a piece of data that fits into the boundary. So the boundary has a lower limit and an upper limit. So it, it tells you where the data goes. There might be a boundary below it that says 73.5 to 74.5. Do you see, here's one boundary, here's another boundary. 72.7 fits into this boundary. It does not fit into this boundary because 72.7 is not between these two numbers. So a boundary has a lower, a lower boundary and an upper boundary that a number should fit in between. That's what a boundary is. And if we look at this, 15, the way we find boundaries for single pieces of data, so this is a test of what, 
is boundary for 15. So first of all, the upper boundary is just add 0.5. The lower boundary is subtract 0 0.5. 15 minus 0 0.5 is 14.5. So the boundary for 15 is 14.5 to 15.5. Do you see 15 is right in the middle, is right between these two. So what's the boundary for 86? Well, the upper boundary is just add 0 0.5. The lower boundary, you could subtract one from this and then add 0.5. Subtract one is from 86 is 85 and then put a 0.5 or you can just subtract 0 0.5. 86 minus 0 0.5, you get 85.5. So that's how you do boundaries. You always go one decimal place more. Uh, so here is a number 40.043. So the boundaries is go one decimal place more. Just do you see we did the decimal is here for 86. We just put a five in there for the upper boundary. The decimal is here. We put a five in there for the upper boundary. 0.435, you know, 0.43, just put a five at the end. 0.435, that's the upper boundary. Lower boundary is you subtract one from this number 43 and I have 42 and then put a 0.5. So once again, 43 fits right between those two. You have to, the upper boundary is just put a 0.5 at the end of it. The lower boundary is subtract one, 42, and then put a 0.5. 1.6, 1 just add a point, a five at the end of it, 1.65. Uh, the lower boundary is subtract one from the last digit, six minus five is one, and then put a five at the end of it. So that's how you do boundaries for single digits. The upper boundary is just put a five at the end. If it's a decimal, put a five there at the end. The lower boundary is subtract one from that last digit and then put the five at the end after you subtract one. And you'll have homework on that. Hopefully it doesn't, it's really not that hard. Actually, we have, we have instructions on how to do this. It's really, I think it's confusing, but it's what we just did. Uh, do you see, it says for the left boundary, that's the lower, let's look at the right boundary. The right boundary, that's the upper boundary. The right boundary is the upper boundary. I'm trying to get this pen here. Upper boundary, just put a, a five at the end on the last digit. The uh, 13, the right boundary, you just put a five at the end. 13 is a whole number and there's a decimal, 13.5. For the left boundary, for 13, subtract one, I get 12, and then put a tack on a, a five at the end. 12, 12.5. 12 so for 13, the boundaries are 12.5 to 13.5. And I'm going to give you a second. And if you would type in the boundaries for this first one. Find the boundaries for 8.4. And it looks like everybody's typing in the same thing. You guys are all cheaters. <laughs> uh, so we just add a 0.5 to the end of it, 8, 4, and then add a 5 to the end of it. And then here we subtract 1 from 8.4, subtract 1 to the last digit, I get 8.3. 8.3, and then put a 5 at the end of it. So that's what our boundaries look like. The lower limit and the upper limit. Upper boundary, lower boundary. Ooh, I don't want to call them limits. Limits are something else. All right. And I'm just going to write this one 
138, you subtract one, you get 137, then put the five on the end, 138 is the decimal here, then you just put the five at the end of it. Here, you put the five at the end of it, 137.62, and then put the five at the end of it, subtract one from that last digit here, write it exactly as you see it, and then put the five at the end of it. So that's how you do boundaries for single digits. Mm -hmm. Okay, so levels of measurement, we need to know these. Uh, by the way, do we, we have a quiz this first week? It's either this first week or week two. Uh, and one of these levels of measurements is on the quiz. One of these level of measurements is on the quiz. There's just one question, and it's about one of these levels of measurement. Uh, so if we look at this, levels of measurement, nominal is a category, and there's no way, to, no order in ranking. Nominal, uh, and there's no order or ranking for it. Um, uh, and I'm going to, I'm not going to give exam. Well, maybe I, oh, do I have my book with me? Yes, I do. No, I don't. Where is my stats book at? I think I left my stats book at work. Uh, at school. Uh, anyway, we're going to get back to this because we have a, a, a clue uh, or a, a quiz or something. Uh, so nominal, just there's no ranking and no order. You can't put them in order. Uh, no order means you cannot put them in order. Cannot put in order. And you can't rank them. Like uh, a level of yeah, yeah. I I don't want to I don't want to give you an example yet. Hang on. Ordinal uh, is the same thing as this, except you can put them in order. You can put them in order. Um, ordinal. Uh, it, it says it's the same thing as nominal. It's a category for a name. Uh, except you can put them in order. So nominal, no order, ordinal, you, you have an order. College class level, you're either a freshman, sophomore, how do you spell sophomore in there? Uh, junior, or senior. Do you see, you can put them in order. Freshman, sophomore, junior, senior. There is an order to them. Uh, your grades, your letter grades, A, B, or C, there's definitely an order. Uh, sizes of shirt, small, medium, large, extra large. So you can order them or you can rank them. You know, order or rank, don't forget, uh, you can rank them also, like A, B, and C, your class ranking, or first, second, and third, uh, freshman, sophomore, junior, senior. So you can put them in some type of order. Nominal, you can't put them in an order. Interval, that means you can put them in order. Uh, plus the intervals are consistent. Um, Another way of writing inter the difference between this and the last one is there's no true zero. Interval, there is no true zero. And I'll show you, a true zero means something can, uh, nothing's below zero. True zero means nothing. There's nothing below it. Do you see temperature is an interval? Answer. And by the way, interval, you can also write these as a decimal number. And I just want to show you, uh, if, if you have numbers, it's okay to write them as a def decimal number you can. 
but temperature, you can have a temperature of 74 degrees uh, or 74.1 degree. Um, and there's no true zero. We can get down to zero degrees, zero degrees Fahrenheit. Um, in Alaska, it gets down to zero. Here in Texas, I don't think we ever get down to zero. Um, what's below zero in Alaska? Does it get colder than zero? In Alaska, is there anything colder than zero degrees Fahrenheit? Yes, in Alaska, sometimes it gets negative 10 degrees Fahrenheit, negative 20 degrees Fahrenheit. So in, in yes, do you see there's no, zero is not the bottom. Interval, there's no true zero. That means zero is not the bottom. Zero is not the bottom temperature. Zero is not the bottom because you can go negative. Yes, you can't have a negative IQ, no. <laughs> Zero just means you're brain dead. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Uh, in, uh, oh, wait. Um, because I don't think you can have a zero IQ. I think you're considered brain dead then. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. I don't know why IQ uh, examples, I2Q temperature interval notation. Uh, I don't know why the IQ score is there. That's a good point. Uh, you can put, a, oh, you can put IQ scores in order. That's okay. Plus intervals are consistent. So I don't know. Yeah, that's that's it. That comes up with a good point. I don't know why that is there. Me personally, I think I would have put IQ maybe down in ratio. I don't know if yeah. There's no true zero. I don't know if we have a. Uh, I don't. There's nothing below IQ. I've never heard of uh, anything below IQ. Um, there's no true zero. They are consistent. Yeah, maybe because, yeah, just because they're consistent, but these uh, plus ratios are consistent also. Uh, so I don't, I don't know if it's in the wrong category. Let me know if you see that in the homework. Uh, I'm, I'll, I'll actually look that one up, why that's in interval. I would think that might be down in ratio. Interval also has a lot to do, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> uh, temperature is just a great, yeah, usually we use temperature on the quizzes and the tests. You'll actually see something like that. Where there's no true zero, you can go negative. Uh, so once again, no true zero, you can go negative. Here, ratio, you cannot go negative. There is a true zero. No negative uh, answers or numbers. Uh, so ratio, um, uh, example of a ratio would be your height. Uh, um, because you can't go negative. Maybe that's what they're talking about, true zero. You, uh, you, you can't go negative on your height or your weight. Your weight fluctuates around, fluctuates around and you can't go negative. Your weight is a ratio. Uh, so yeah, IQ scores, I'm still worried because I you, you can't go negative. Zero just means you have zero. Uh, so I have no idea about that, why that IQ is there. Uh, me personally, I think I would put IQ down into the ratio. Okay, so let's look at these. Determine uh, the measure of... Uh, uh, so this is this is a good one. If we go back up, remember I said uh, nominal is a category, the top one, but they didn't have examples. They have examples down here. I wanted to wait for that. So once again, hair color. 
blue, uh, you can have blue hair nowadays, uh, a blonde, brunette, black, uh, red. So there's lots of colors. It's nominal. Uh, and you, because you can't really put it in order, right? Uh, okay, put the hair colors in order. Well, it might be your personal order. I like red, blue, but there's no order. They're just, what are the hair colors? You can't list them in, uh, in a certain order, the top and the bottom. They're just in order. Zip codes um, that you, that's a tough one. It, I mean, they're nominal, even though they're numbers, 78219, 78209, um, 7820, uh, I live in 78, yeah, 218, by the way, yeah, I live in this one. Uh, um, oh, is that why, uh, Jordan? Okay, well, I'm going to go back to that in a second. I'm going to go back to that in a second then. Thanks, Jordan. Um, but here, uh, zip codes uh, are a category. These numbers really have no meaning. All it is is the area that you live in. You could have called the area A, B, C, or D. They're just areas you live in. And if you ever look at a zip code map, there's no order to them. They, I mean, you don't go in San Antonio, 78218, then 78219. They're all over the place. There is no order to, I mean, I can put these in numerical order, but that has no meaning. Uh, um, can I put the zip codes in order from where they are? Then they wouldn't, there's no way of putting them in order because you don't know where these are unless you're looking at a big zip code map. So these are numbers, but that's, they're only numbers because we wanna write them down on a envelope so they can send it to a certain location. But these zip codes are not made for a certain order. These numbers have no meaning. Uh, I mean, in reality, these numbers have no meaning um, uh, other than it, it indicates a location that you're at. Uh, pizza slices, small, medium, and large. Um, once again, if we go back up to the top. So they, they, they show uh, ordinal, and if we go back to ordinal, it's you can put them in order. Uh, they can be ranked. So you can put them in order. Do you want small, medium, and large? You know, uh, do you want big, bigger, or biggest? Uh, eye color, once again, uh, is nominal, just like hair color. Eye colors, those are good examples of nominal, where you can't put them in a specific order. They're, one's not better than the other. Um, height, as soon as you get height, um, you're in ratio. Um, and we're going to look at the difference between ratio and interval again. Oh, well, let's look at no true zero for height. Uh, I hate to say this. <laughs> there, yeah, there, some people have a negative salary where they owe money. <laughs> but there is no negative salary. You're not going to work and, and pay people. Even so, some, some people might do that. <laughs> so those are ratios. There's no true zero uh, temperature. Well, temperature, there's no zero, no true zero. Sorry, I said it wrong. These two, there is a true zero. You can't go less than zero. Cannot go negative. So let's look at uh, that again. He's, he's looking at IQ, the difference between IQ, between ratio and interval. Uh, Intervals are consistent. Uh, what you're saying, there's no significance. To di there's no significant difference between 89 IQ and 90 IQ, um, or ratio. 
I don't know if that's true. There is no true zero. Think about a temperature for a minute. I don't know if I can say that about IQ. It says there's no significant difference. Is there a significant difference? I think there's a significant, there's no significant difference between an 89 and a, and, well, there's no significant difference between a, a 99 and a hundred. I think there is because a hundred is average <laughs> and a 99 is below average. So I think there's a difference uh, between 89 and, and 90. There's one point. So I don't know. Uh, I'd have to look it up. I'm going to have to find out why this book says IQ score is interval. Uh, I, I think we could almost call it ratio. But let's look at these other categories down here. The difference between interval and, well, we have temperature, uh, salary, and height. I'm going to say let's focus on the no true zeros. Hopefully that IQ doesn't show up on the homework. I know it doesn't show up on tests. Normally temperature falls on tests. Height and uh, salary doesn't. Height, weight. Height and weight are ratio. Height and weight are ratio. Those are the ones uh, that have no true zero uh, or this that have a true zero. I keep on saying it backwards. I got to write it down to get it. That has a true zero. You can't go negative. This has no true zero because you can go negative. Um, let's look at it this way. This is how I'm going to look at IQs. Okay, John, I think this is how we're going to look at it. That, that brings up a really good point. I, I think this is how we look at it. I think this is how they indicate uh, and this is how they indicate the difference between interval and ratio. And I thought I wrote it down, uh, but interval, interval has no decimals. No, we can't say that. See, see there's no difference. Be, there's no... There's an 88 IQ. We're looking at uh, IQs 88 and 89. There is no such thing as an 88.5 IQ. Uh, there's, no, there's no such thing as an 88.5. So we go from 88 to 89, uh, and there's, there's no numbers in between that. Ratio... You can go in between, see, but temperature, you can still go from 89 degrees to a, a 90 degrees. So, so I can't use that excuse. I can't use that as an excuse uh, because if, if uh, there's no true zero, if you temperatures, we can go to decimals and we can go as many decimals as we need between 88 and 89. So there's nothing between 88 and 89, um, but temperatures we can. There's got to be a better, there's got to be a, a, a easier logical explanation on that. I promise you, I will not put IQ on a test. Mm -hmm. um, treat yourself, what levels of measurement do all these have? The ages of patients at a local hospital. So let's look at these ages of patients. Uh, ages uh, can be put in order. One-year-olds, two-year-olds, three-year-olds. Um, and uh, there's no decimal ages. Um, so all the one-year-olds go here, all the two-year-olds go here, all the three-year-olds go here. I would almost say the ages of these kids, where are we at, are ordinal.
because we can put them in a certain order. Ratings of movies released this month. Their ratings. This is nominal. Anything you have a color, it's nominal. That's pretty good. Temperatures of a hot tub. Look at the temperature. Temperature, since there's no true zero, it's interval. Anytime you see temperature, you type in interval. And then ratings of a movie. Uh, it depends on how the ratings are. Are they, you know, like stars or happy faces, sad faces? See, a lot of times they, do, they don't specify. Uh, ratings of a movie, uh, categories, but no order ranking. So ratings are, you could put in an order, I would say ordinal on those. Also ordinal. Uh, classify each as qualitative or quantitative. Remember, quality is a category. Quantitative is some kind of a number. Oh, wait. Classify each. Are we missing a page? That's page eight. That's page nine. Or, with it, or how do they want us to do this? I don't know what they wanted us to do. They're talking about those examples. You, the you think they're talking about this example? That's a really weird question. So if, if we're going to classify these as qualitative or quantitative, ages of patients in a hospital, 6, 7, 20, uh, they're numbers, so they're quantitative. We can count them. Uh, and, 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 and look at them. Uh, the ratings of a movie is different, definitely a qualitative, uh, good, bad. I mean, that's how I'm saying is, uh, is the, is, does the movie have, uh, is it good, bad, uh, terrible? I, I don't know how else you can rate them with numbers, but the, they're uh, a four stars, those are number of stars, you know, four stars is good. It's still, you can say good, bad, or uh, ugly, good, bad, really good, really bad. Um, so I'm gonna say that's a qualitative. Colors, colors is qualitative. Temperatures in a hot tub, temperature is a quantity. It's an amount, quantitative, if we're doing those that way. And we said this was quantitative. So there's two quantitative and two qualitative. I think that's what they wanted. And that's a bad question. They should have put the question above it. And finally, one more section. This is a tough, this definition stuff is tough. You have to have them right in front of you all the time. Uh, collection of data samples. So this is the different ways we collect data. Um, if we look here, we're just going to go through it. Uh, surveys, you have telephone surveys. Uh, there's good things about telephone surveys. It doesn't cost a lot. <laughs> uh, people tend to tell you the truth. Do you like Trump? If you're out in public, they might say yes or no. Uh, or in private, they might be more likely if they tell you where the phone is it's private, they might be more likely to tell you the truth. Uh, so I think that's what they're saying. You're more candid. You're more, more truthful. Candid is another way of saying you're not lying. <laughs> um, biased, the tone of your voice, uh, you, the, of, of the person doing the interview. What if you call me up and say, do you like Trump? 
you know, well, you say yes or no. Do you want to say something to please that person? Because it sounds like they don't like Trump. Um, or do you like Biden? Do you like, or do you like Joe Biden? He's a great president. Or he will be a great president. Uh, okay, so it's the tone of the voice. That's a bias. <laughs> So there might be biases of the people on the phone. They might have their opinions and try to push their opinions onto you. Uh, you can mail in questionnaires, pros. You can send it out to a, a big area. Cons, most people don't return those questionnaires. So you get a low number of responses back. <laughs> or they're not filled out correctly. Personal interviews, uh, people can go in depth and ask follow-up questions. Cons, uh, the interviewers must be trained because the interviewers can be biased and try to coax you to say a certain thing. So these are other sampling techniques that we are actually gonna have to know and uh, we're gonna have these coming up. Random, systematic, stratified, cluster, and convenient. We have to know the definition of all of these. They will be on our test. They will be on our quizzes. They will be on the final exam. One or two of these will be on all of those. So we have to know these. We have to know their definitions. And their definitions are, let's get to them, random. Exactly as it says. Everybody has an equal chance. They're, they're picking you at random, has an equal chance of being selected. Um, if you've ever um, um, played the lo uh, lottery, <laughs> well, I don't know if everybody has an equal chance of being selected, but at a raffle, if you ever had a raffle and you break your ticket, you keep your stub and you put the other stub inside a big bin that they throw around and all these tickets are going around, everybody has an equal chance. That's, they're going to pick one at random. They're just picking one. The guy's not looking at it and says, oh, I'm going to pick my wife's. <laughs> He's picking one at random. Everyone has, is in there and has an equal chance of getting it if everybody has one ticket. <laughs> so random, you have an equal chance of being selected. And you can read a little bit more if you guys want to read this. Our calculator does a random number generator. That's not so random, but I, I normally do that in a face-to-face -face class. Systematic sampling. So here's the second one. Systematic sampling. Uh, you're selecting every Kth member. And this happens at airports. <laughs> You'd be surprised, but the TSA often does systematic sampling. They say every... 27th person that comes through my metal detector is going to get a pat down. Uh, other than if you beep and beep, every 27th person who doesn't beep, I'm still going to pat them down. So that's the Kth member. You know, every sixth car that comes through here, we're going to stop and search. Uh, that's called systematic. Systematic sampling where you're doing the same thing. Every fifth person is going to get searched for drugs. Every 20th person uh, is going to be uh, checked to see if they have COVID-19. We're going to check your temperature. So that's systematic when they, they, they have a set, set number and they check each person uh, that falls into that number. Then once that 28th person comes by, then they go one, two, three, four, five, till the next 28th person comes by and then they pick him to... to pull them over and search them. Once again, this is picking, they're just showing systematic sampling for every third person. One, two, three, picked. One, two, three, picked. One, two, three, he's picked. One, two, three, picked. Picking every third person. So these people are in the sample. Do you see the third bottle, the sixth bottle? These are the people that are in the sample. These are the people that we picked. Every third person is called systematic sampling. They have a system to pick you. Mm -hmm. Stratified sampling. 
So we need to know stratified sampling, often people get this mixed up with the next one, cluster. Stratified sampling, you're dividing the population into groups. Um, and then um, you would divide them into groups. Then I would randomly select each group, people from each group. So stratified, you're going to put people in groups, then pick people from each group. You have to pick some people from each group, a certain amount from each group. So what they did here was they put people in different groups. And there's three different group, or there's two different groups here. We obviously they put them in men group and women group, and they picked one, two, three, four men, and they picked one, two, three, four women, and they put them all over here. This is the subgroup. They put those four men and these four women in this group, and that's called stratified, where they put people into groups, and you can have as many groups as you want but you have to sample people from every group. Stratified, you sample people from every group that you create. Now the next one, cluster, you're putting people into groups. But then you pick all the people in one or more groups. So you can you pick all the people in a group and you can have you can pick more than one group. You pick all the members in a cluster in a group. It says one or more. You can pick one or more clusters. So you have to pick everybody in the group. And where do they they don't have an example? Uh, here the, here's an example. And I like this, this is zip, the zip code example. <laughs> uh, I want data on the amount of homework given to elementary students. Uh, so we have all these groups. Uh, these are the groups by area codes, I guess, or whatever they're doing. And if you notice, uh, 814, they picked everybody in this group and they picked everybody in this group. None of these people were asked about this, this questionnaire. None of these people were asked. Everybody in this group and everybody in this group were asked about, does your kid go to elementary school or whatever the question was. So a cluster means you have a whole bunch of groups, but you pick everybody in the cluster in a specific group. And sometimes you can pick more than one cluster if you want, but everybody has to be surveyed. In the stratified, you have all the groups, you're only picking a couple people from every group for a cluster, you're picking everybody from one or more groups. There's something called a convenient uh, sampling. That it, it, it's very convenient. Mall surveys. You could want to look at women with children if they walk by. Is it, if a woman walks by with children, you survey her. Okay. Types of error. So we have sampling error and non-sampling error. So we just read these. Sampling error is the difference between the result obtained and the sample from, the, well, let me show you an example of sampling error. Um, out of our population of the USA, I'm calling USA a population. Uh, in USA, 5% of the people, I'm, th I'm just putting up bogus numbers. I don't know this for a fact. 5% of the people get uh, COVID-19 so far. 5% have gotten COVID-19. A sample would be everybody in Texas because Texas is part of USA. Sample is Texas and or San Antonio or whatever, and 3% got COVID-19 in San Antonio or Texas, we're going to say, only 3%. So the sampling error is the difference 
from the sample to the population. The difference is 5% minus 3% is 2%. This is the sample error. There's a 2% difference between what is true and what we have. What is true for the whole population and is what's true for our population. So there's a 2% error in Texas because there, it's 2% different from the whole country. If we say USA is our population. So the error is the difference from the sample to the population. Uh, Non-sampling error occurs when the data is obtained erroneously faulty equipment that's not working and you're not getting the data correctly, buy a sample when somebody says, hey, do you like Trump? Or do you like Trump? You know, it's the way they ask it. They have some kind of bias. So it may change your, your answer. Uh, there's lots of human error in sampling and fraud. Uh, we see that a lot in politics. We're gonna see a lot of fraud. Okay, so test your, uh, our ability here. Um, of 10 hospitals in a municipality, a researcher selects one and collects records for 24 hours. In other words, they're collecting all the records for 24 hours uh, out of, there's 10 hospitals and they're gonna select everything in one. What kind of uh, sampling method is this? You have 10 groups and you're going to pick one. Remember, that's a cluster. When you're picking everybody from one group. If we come back up to that top there. A cluster is when you pick everybody from one cluster, everybody from a group. Uh, a researcher divides into groups. Once again, anytime you divide into a group, you're either a cluster or a stratified. Uh, according to gender, uh, then she randomly selects six students from every group. If you're picking the same amount of students from every group, it's stratified. If you're picking the same amount from every group, it's stratified. If you pick all the people from one or two groups, then it's clustered. Subscribers to magazines are numbered. Then a sample of these people is uh, selected using random number, <laughs> using random numbers. So they have subscriptions and then randomly uh, select people. Well, if they randomly select people, it's random. <laughs> uh, I like it when the answer is in the question. Check to, when you do the if when to check the accuracy of a machine uh, uh, filling ice cream containers. We want to we want to weigh every twentieth bottle, and once again, when it's every tenth, when you, every twentieth or every fifth, that's systematic. That's systematic sampling. And that is section 1.3. Uh, let me hit stop recording. All right.